Hey everyone, time to talk about chemical bonds. So let's begin with what is a chemical bond. We need to understand that a chemical bond is not a physical thing. A chemical bond is the result of physical things, but a chemical bond itself is merely the force holding together the atoms in a molecule. Now, let's define the vocabulary. Molecules are, or compounds, so the word molecule, aka the word compound, are formed when atoms bind together. So this is a molecule composed of one, two, three, four, five different atoms. Or same, I don't know, whatever. Either way, it's a molecule is made of atoms stuck together. So you can't hold a chemical bond in your hand. It's not a physical thing. A chemical bond is just the force holding one atom and another atom together. That said, we do need to understand what real world things that theoretically could hold in your hands that actually do make these chemical bonds happen and stay together. So that has to do with what you can see here. Why do atoms bond together? Answer, atoms stick together because of electrostatic forces. This right here, attraction of positive and negative charges, that's the definition of electrostatic. This means attraction between opposite charges. Because remember, opposite charges attract, like charges repel. So, the um, will be mentioned later that there you can either have fully oppositely charged ions that make what's called an ionic bond because positive ion will attract to a negative ion and stick together or you can have something called a covalent bond that'll be mentioned later where the protons of one atom remember that's positive are attracted to the electrons of another atom remember those are negative and so this is what that one is so the idea is like if two atoms are sharing their electrons it's kind of like two toddlers both grabbing onto the same toy and if they both won't let go then well there you go they're stuck together so that's the big idea of what chemical bonds is all about now i mentioned the electrostatic forces remember this means attraction between opposite charges this is the other thing that basically means the same thing that's just another word we use to refer to the same idea coulombic forces are forces that involve attraction between opposite charges so uh, let me bring all this up so opposite charges attract like charges repel, as mentioned earlier, and optimal bond length is the distance where attraction between electrons and the nucleus balances repulsion between electrons and the nuclei of the two atoms. Um, bonds represent the state of lowest potential energy. Okay, so let's digest this a little bit. Optimal bond length is the distance where attraction between electrons and the nucleus balances repulsion between the electrons. So we said Atoms bond because of attraction between opposite charges, but they don't just slam into each other and just stick like right next to each other. They have to be at a certain distance. Too close and the two nuclei will repel each other, like here, and the electrons in one will repel the electrons from the other. Too far and there's just no force of attraction. So you need something that's part way in between and that is the happy medium where they're close enough to attract but not so close that it's an uncomfortable squeeze. So this, pay attention to this, the most stable distance, which is to say the most stable bond, the most stable distance between these is lowest potential energy. High potential energy means unstable. This is like a high explosive. Low potential energy means very stable. So the most stable bonds represent the state of lowest potential energy. So speaking more about bond energy. So when you have atoms bond together, we can put numbers and quantify the energy that's making them stick together, the energy of attraction between the two. The force of attraction can be quantified as energy. Because it takes, it turns out, energy is required if you want to pull them apart, energy is released if they come together. So uh, more about that in a sec. Um, this will help to make the idea more concrete, but again, let's repeat that. Forming bonds releases energy, breaking bonds requires energy. And we can use as an analogy magnets. And we got these little ones here. These are little um, neodymium magnets. And these can be sort of like a chemical bond because chemical bonds, remember, are atoms sticking together because they're attracted to each other's oppositely charged pieces. Just like these things stick together because they are um, opposite, they are opposite magnetic um, forces, opposite magnetic poles. So, let me pull these apart. 
and actually I should pull these apart where you can see them. It actually, man, new knitting man is take a bit of force to pull apart. It actually is not super easy. These things are um, strongly attracted to each other. So I have to pull kind of hard to bring them apart. Likewise, um, something that you'll notice here, it says breaking a bond. Sorry, uh, let's see. Yeah, breaking a bond uh, requires energy. So it's actually said right here, breaking bonds requires energy. So that means you gotta put energy in to pulling something apart. So breaking a bond is like, means pulling atoms apart, just like pulling magnets apart. It takes energy to pull them apart. I have to try, I have to put effort into it. Now it says here, forming bonds releases energy. Forming bonds is when atoms stick together. So releasing energy, that's kind of like when you allow these magnets to stick together. Notice it releases energy. In fact, it releases so much energy that if I'm not careful, these can stick together with enough force to actually break each other. Okay, because energy is being released when these come together, just like energy is released when atoms come together. So this right here, high explosives, remember I said they have high potential energy, they're unstable, they want to go to a more stable, lower potential energy. So, because they're so unstable, it only takes a little bit of energy to break their bonds, and then they release a whole bunch as they form much more stable, low energy bonds. And that's why they release so much energy in that form. Let's see. So to summarize that little idea, we're gonna say higher bond energy is stronger bond, Stronger quantum forces must be overcome in order to pull the atoms apart. Okay, because higher bond energy, stronger bond, so they attract each other more strongly. That means it's harder to pull them apart from each other. Like strong magnets are harder to pull apart. Or lower bond energy makes a weaker bond because there's weaker forces of attraction between opposite charges. That's what quantum forces is, as a reminder. Just like weak magnets require less energy to pull apart. All right, so I'm gonna pause that there because we've got more to come up in the next video.